We need to be able to write chemical equations. Now a chemical equation is a representation of a chemical reaction. We are going to learn how to write them and what we call balance them. Now many of you have learned to write and balance equations in a uh, previous chemistry class, maybe in high school, um, but uh, I'm not assuming any knowledge here, so let's just go on. What's the chemical reaction and chemical equation? What, what are they defining? Chemical reaction is the actual process, okay? If I were to uh, take some hydrogen and oxygen and light a match to it and it goes boom, that's a chemical reaction, okay? The hydrogen is reacting with the oxygen. And there is a change to a new substance. It's going to produce water. That is the chemical reaction, the actual process. The chemical equation is our way of using symbols to represent the reaction that takes place. So a lot of times we use these terms interchangeably because the equation is a representation of the reaction. And if I call it a chemical reaction and it's an equation, it is an equation that is representing the reaction. So while we use them interchangeably very often, they are subtly different in their definition. The reaction is the actual process. The equation is our way of representing them. So we've got to write good chemical equations to represent those reactions, and we have to do what's called balancing them. Now let's talk about a certain chemical reaction, the one that I just described for you. Okay? Hydrogen will react with oxygen to produce water. So we will write down that equation. Now you learn that um, reactants you write on the right hand side, okay? Products you, sorry, is that right? Left hand side. Products you write on the right hand side. You use an arrow to represent that process taking place, okay? So we would write um, good formulas for the substances. Now there's another confusion for students. The word formula and the word equation mathematically might be a little bit more similar, but here they mean something completely different. A formula represents a compound or an element. That is, you know, the formula for helium is HE. The formula for water is H2O. That's a formula. The equation is for the whole reaction. It should have arrow in there representing the reaction taking place between reactants and products. Okay? So you got to make sure you write good formulas for each of the substances. Go ahead and try to write something down. Now you may have written this down. Hydrogen, it's one of our diatomic elements. You have to know which ones are diatomic. Oxygen, one of our diatomic elements, so we write it now as O2. We don't do H plus O, we do H2 plus O2. And then we write a good formula for water, H2O. We can't write H2O2 to make sure we have the same number of oxygens because the formula for water is not H2O2, that's peroxide. Um, this is hydrogen or water H2O. Now if we look at that formula, okay, it is not balanced. On the left hand side it has two oxygen atoms and on the right hand side there's only one oxygen atom. That's a problem. We can't just say, well we don't need that oxygen and, and have it vanish. We have to represent all the atoms on both sides in order for it to be balanced. Okay, so here is actual, it's already balanced for us and we can see that we have the same number of atoms on both sides. If we had two molecules of H2, that would give me four hydrogen atoms. And then over here on the right, we have two molecules of water and it too has those four hydrogen atoms. If we have one oxygen molecule but two water molecules, we see that we have two O's represented there. So this is a, um, water balanced. We have to get to where we can do that to where the same number of atoms are on both sides of the equation. Now, right now we're thinking about it in terms of molecules. Eventually we will up the scale and we will think about these balanced equations in terms of moles because a mole is nothing more than a number as well. All right, so uh, it is now a nice balanced equation and we're going to go through the process of how to balance them. Keep in mind that whenever we write reactions, the things on the left are called your reactants, and um, the things on the right are the products. The reactants are generally what you're starting with. The products are what are produced, okay? That's why they're called products. They're on the right-hand side, what is formed by the reaction taking place. So how do we do this? 
and there's a little bit of trial and error associated with the process and I'm going to give you some tricks to the trade as we go through but there are some essentials okay so the first essential is that you have to write correct formulas for each of the substances remember the formula represents the compound or the element okay the equation re represents that whole thing taking place so we have to make sure if it's diatomic we write it as diatomic if it's an ionic compound and we've learned how to write ionic compounds we're writing a good formula for that ionic compound if it's barium chloride we're not just doing BACL we're thinking about the charges and we're writing down good formulas for barium chloride which would be because barium is plus two and chloride is minus one it's BACL2 it is essential that you write good formulas all right next thing the next big essential rule is that you're only allowed to use coefficients to balance the equations you are not allowed to change the subscripts once you write good formulas and you have your formula set now you had to put subscripts in there to get good formulas all right water is h2o so you did put a 2 next to the h all right um, barium chloride is bacl2 so you wrote good formulas but once you've got those established you're not allowed to change those subscripts you only to use coefficients these coefficients are the big numbers in front of them if you look back at the balanced water reaction that we had before we see these big numbers in front which are to tell you that this is how many of those molecules that we have so you never change the subscripts now you should look for the elements that appear only once on each side and start with those so if, if barium is over here once and it's over here once get those balanced but if it's over here twice and over here once, skip it, all right? If you have something that appears in more than one place on one side of that equation, you want to skip it and go to the things that only appear on each side once. Um, there's another one that maybe I should add to that, and I'll just put it up here. Um, save elements, pure elements, for last if you can okay save pure elements for last so we've got a, a compound an atom or an element a compound and a compound maybe it's O2 save that O2 for last because it, you can use it once you get everything else balanced to get balanced all right so that's it all right that's no big set of rules you write the good formulas you use coefficients only and if it's if you get uh, substances that appear more than one place in one side of the equation save it for last and then I want to show you some other tricks of the trade with example problems okay all right, so we have KClO3 going to KCl plus O2, okay? Now, for the, the rules, we've already got the, the good formulas. That was given to us. That was nice. We only have K here once and here once, chlorine, chlorine, and oxygen. Um, you know, each thing is only appearing once, so that third thing doesn't apply. Um, but save pure elements for last, so we'll save the oxygen because it's the pure element. We'll do the oxygen last. All right, but that's the only thing we need to balance because we have 1K, 1K, 1 chlorine, 1 chlorine. Okay, now we have three oxygens and two oxygens and I can only use coefficients so I can't come up here and say well it'd be a lot easier if that were a two it'd be a lot easier if that's a three I can't change those there's a couple ways that we can do this I'm going to give you both ways and you can choose which one works for you better one thing that you could do is um, come up with the least common multiple between those two numbers okay and shoot for that so between two and three that's six so let's give ourselves six of each so if I put a three here that gives me six oxygens and if I put a two here that'll give me six oxygens so now my oxygens are balanced but that messed up my K and my CL that gave me two K's and that gave me two CL's let's talk for a minute about that coefficient that two in front applies to the whole thing so I have two of this whole thing that gives me two K's two CLs and six oxygens okay so now I need two K's well if I put a two in front of this that'll give me two K's and two CL's and that's balanced so I thought about the least common multiple to get the oxygen balanced and then everything else fell into place another way to do this 
is not thinking about the least common multiple, but using fractions. Okay, so let me show you what I mean about this. Oops, I didn't want to put a two there. Okay, I have uh, potassium's balanced, my chlorine's balanced, I want to get to my oxygen. Now you don't want to leave likely the uh, fraction, though at some points it will be appropriate, but usually at this point in working problems they'll say balance this equation using the lowest possible whole number coefficients. Okay, so we wouldn't want to leave fractions, but I want to utilize fractions. Let's see how. I have three oxygens, I have two oxygens. What fraction could I put in front of this so that I would have three oxygens over here as well? Well, if I multiply two and three halves, would that give me three? Three halves times two, whatever the coefficient is times the subscript will give you how many you have. Three halves times two will give me three oxygens, and so this is balanced. But if you want to balance it with the lowest possible whole numbers, then you need to go through and you need to get rid of that fraction by multiplying everything through by the denominator. So I multiply all my coefficients through by that 2. That's going to give me a 2 here. It's going to give me a 2 here. And if I take 3 halves times 2, that's going to give me a 3 here. So net is exactly the same thing I came up with here, and I used a fraction. I very often use the fraction method rather than least thinking about the least common multiple. Know this also. Sometimes it's just a trial and error. Okay, you try something, it didn't work. Some, some of these are quite complicated to do. All right, here's our next one that we're going to work together. C2H6 plus O2 goes to CO2 plus H2O. We see that oxygen appears in more than one place on the right-hand side. We don't want to do oxygen first. Go to the other elements. We also see that oxygen is a pure element, and it's helpful to save that for last. So either way you look at it, it's helpful to save it for last. So I will write it down unbalanced, C2H6 plus O2 going to carbon dioxide. This is the reaction for the complete combustion of what we call a hydrocarbon. See, it's only got hydrogen and carbon. That's called a hydrocarbon. When it reacts with oxygen, it'll always give you these if it's complete combustion. This is what um, gasoline does. This is what oil does. This is um, what a lot of things that we use acetylene for acetylene torches. Um, so anyway, there is the reaction. Now let's balance it. Let's balance the carbons. I have two carbons. I need two carbons. Well, here's my source of carbon on the right-hand side. If I put a 2 in the front, that will give me two carbons. Remember, 2 multiplied by the subscripts. All right, now let's balance the hydrogen. I have six hydrogens. I need six hydrogens. What coefficient would I have to put in front so that I had six hydrogens? Well, 3 times 2 will give me six hydrogens. So I have six hydrogens and I have six hydrogens. Next I'm ready to do the oxygen. Okay, so let's look on this side and let's see how many oxygen we have. We have 2 times 2, that's 4, plus 3 times 1, that's 7. Now what coefficient can I put in front of the O2 so that I have 7 oxygens? Well again, a fraction is handy. 7 halves times 2 is 7. So now I have 7 oxygens and it is balanced. But if it says to balance it with the lowest whole numbers, that's not a whole number, that's a fraction. So I multiply everything through by 2. So as we multiply everything through by 2, that would be a 1 times 2 is a 2. A 7 halves times 2 is 7. A 2 times 2 is a 4, and a 3 times 2 is a 6. So now let's double check that it is indeed balanced. We have 2 times 2, we have 4. We have 2 times 6 is 12. 6 times 2 is 12. We have 7 times 2 is 14. And we have, let's add it up now, 4 times 2 is 8 plus 6 times 1, and that's 14. So we had 14 oxygens on this side, and we have 14 oxygens on this side. Now
Now, I have seen students coming up with um, you know, like grids underneath these, and you can do that, but very often it's just a matter of looking at it, making it work with a coefficient that changes something, looking at it, and make it work with the next coefficient, and you'll be able to work your way through without coming up with a grid of how many it is. You can carry that many numbers in your mind. But if you need to, and you need to do this and do, I have carbons and hydrogens and oxygen and on this side, I've got this many and this many and change them and then start counting them out. You can do that. That is fine. All right, let's do this one. The reason for this one is because sometimes it's handy to keep a group of atoms intact if they're the same way on each side of the equation. Now what do I mean by that? I'm talking about our polyatomic ions. We've gotten ourselves familiar with polyatomic ions, right? Uh, let's look at those polyatomic ions that we can see in this one. It's phosphate. Rather than looking at P's and O's separately, this is a whole lot easier to balance if you think about the phosphates and how many phosphates you have and balance your phosphates, the PO4 part. Because the oxygens are appearing in so many different places and it's going to be very challenging to balance if you think about them individually. All right, so if I look at this and I'll go ahead and write it out here, okay? My pen write nicely. I have KOH, I have H3PO4, it is forming K3PO4 and H2O, all right? So the K is only appearing in one place. The phosphate is only appearing in one place, but the hydrogen is appearing in multiple places on this side. So I want to save the hydrogen for last. Let's get the K balanced first. I have one K, I have three Ks. So I'm going to put a three here to give me three Ks. I'm not going to, let's go ahead and do the phosphates because it's only appearing in one place here and one place here. It's appearing here, it's appearing here, it's balanced, okay? Let's get our oxygen balanced. Now remember, we're not looking at these oxygens because they were in our phosphates. How many oxygens do I have here? I have three oxygens. So let's get ourselves the three oxygens over here by putting a three right there. All right, so now my oxygens are balanced and now I'm ready to look for my hydrogens and get them balanced. I have on this side three hydrogens here plus three hydrogens here. That's six on this side. And if I do three times two, I have six hydrogens on this side, so it is balanced as it's written. So when you see polyatomic ion staying as the same polyatomic ion, treat it as an individual unit and balance it and don't break it apart into individual atoms. It'll get much more complicated if you do that. All right, so you're going to um, stop and uh, you're going to answer this one. Now this one is a little bit more challenging in that I gave you the names of everything rather than the formulas. You're going to have to review your rules for naming in order to come up with um, your good formulas for everything and then come up with your uh, balance equation and put in as an answer the coefficient of carbon. Okay, well Let's see how we did. Let's see if you got all the pieces and parts. I'll write it out for you here. Silicon dioxide, it is SiO2, okay? Um, it's reacting with carbon, just plain old carbon. Solid carbon is what it says. It could be graphite, it could be diamond. I hope they're not gonna react to diamond. Let's keep those intact. It's going to produce silicon carbide, S-I-C, silicon carbon, carbide, and carbon monoxide. So that's your starting point. Without that, it's very hard to work, okay? So everything is appearing um, once except for the carbon. It's appearing in two different places, so we'll save carbon for last. We have silicon, we have silicon. We have two oxygens, now we have two oxygens, okay? And that gives me one, two, three carbons, so I need three carbons, and that gives me the coefficient of three in front of the carbon. All right, so we've balanced several examples. The best thing for you to do now is to go practice.